Hello everyone and welcome back. It is time to meet the 10 finalists for the self-published fantasy blog off round 8. Those 300 books have now been whittled down and each judging team has put forward their finalist. So stage 1 is over and stage 2 has begun. And in this stage we have six months to read the remaining nine books and give them a rating. So there is a fantastic batch of books chosen this year and I cannot wait to dive in. So the first one is from Fantasy Faction and this is A Song for the Void by Andrew C. Piazza. A Mind Imprisoned is the Greatest of Hells. 1853, South China Sea. While on patrol between the Opium Wars, the crew of the steam frigate HMS Charger pursues a fleet of pirates that have been terrorising the waters surrounding Hong Kong. But now the hunters have become the hunted. Something else has come to the South China Sea, something ancient and powerful and malevolent. Now the crew of the Charger must face their worst nightmares in order to survive the terrible creature they come to know as the Dark Star. The second one is from Fantasy Book Critic, and this is The Umbral Storm by Alec Hudson. A thousand years ago, the heart of the world was shattered, its fragments scattered across the lands. In the chaos that followed, martial orders arose to gather the shards, for it was found that great powers were granted when these pieces were bonded to the flesh of the Chosen. These are the sharded few, warriors imbued with the divine energies that once coursed through the heart driven to absorb enough fragments to claim godhood. Darren has known nothing in his life except suffering. Orphaned at the edge of the realms, indentured to a cruel slaver, he has little hope of escaping his circumstances. But elsewhere, ancient powers are stirring. New alliances threaten the peace of the old order. And against all odds, Darren will find himself a player in a game unlike anything he could have imagined. The next finalist is from Lynn's Books and the Critiquing Chemist, and you'll have to forgive me for reading off this title. Um, Miss Percy's Pocket Guide to the Care and Feeding of British Dragons by Quenby Olson. Miss Mildred Percy inherits a dragon. Ah, but we've already got ahead of ourselves. Miss Mildred Percy is a spinster. She does not dance, she has long stopped dreaming, and she certainly does not have adventures. That is until her great uncle has the audacity to leave her an inheritance, one that includes a dragon's egg. The egg, as eggs are wont to do, decides to hatch, and Miss Mildred Percy is suddenly thrust out of the role of a spinster and general wallflower, and into the unprecedented position of a spinster and keeper of dragons. But England has not seen a dragon since, well, ever. And now Mildred must contend with raising a dragon that should not exist, kindling a romance with a humble vicar, and embarking on an adventure that she never thought would be hers for the taking. The next finalist is from Book Nest, and this is A Touch of Light by Thiago Abdalla. The dead shall not be mourned or remembered, for death is the enemy, and will only drive the seraph away. How far would you go to resurrect someone you love? Would you change who you are to show you belong? The world of Avarin is tearing itself apart. The Domain worships life, its leaders lead eternal lives, and death is a shame that must not be mourned. But for the clowns to the south, death is all that keeps Earth alive. Adrian is a prince of one of the Domain nations. Church teaching says his grief is forbidden, but he will stop at nothing to return his loved ones to worthiness even if it means sacrificing his own. Lynn is a rogue elite warrior hiding from her past, but now an old enemy is rising and running is no longer an option. Nasha is a gifted hunter hiding a terrible secret. A lifelong outcast, she desperately fights for belonging in the Ronar, a proud southern clan. Yet a changing world threatens more than just her status in the community. But now a terrifying foe creeps nearer, and the people of Avarin must fight to save it, before death comes for them all. The next finalist is from the Weatherwax Report, and this is Scales and Sensibility by Stephanie Burgess. Sensible, practical Eleanor Tregarth really did mean to be the model poor relation when she moved into Havergill Hall. She certainly never meant to kidnap her awful cousins, Penelope's pet dragon. 
She never expected to fall in love with the shameless but surprisingly sweet fortune hunter who came to court Penelope. And she never dreamed that she would have to enter into an outrageous magical charade to save her younger sister's futures. However, even the most brilliant scholars of 1817 England still haven't ferreted out all the lurking secrets of rediscovered dragonkind. And even the most sensible heroines can still make a reckless wish or two when she's pushed. Now Eleanor will have to find out just how rash and resourceful she can be when she sets aside all common sense. Maybe, just maybe, she'll even be impractical enough to win her own true love and a happily ever after. With the unpredictable and dangerous help of the magical creature who has adopted her. The next finalist is from Fantasy Inn and this is Mysterious Ways by Abby Evans. The goddess works in mysterious ways and Isabella Varsalak intends to find out exactly what those ways are. As the commander of the seventh unit of the Celestopian City Watch, Isabella Varsalak has dealt with many a mystery. Murderers, burglars, con artists and troublesome demons have given her a multitude of crimes to solve over the years. But injustice in the way the world works is all around her. Innocent people suffer, guilty people triumph. When this is questioned, the only answer she receives is that the goddess works in mysterious ways. Determined to get to the bottom of what these ways are and solve the ultimate mystery, she sets off on a journey to find the answers. But she'll have to go through hell to get them. The next finalist is mine, and this is Tethered Spirits by T.A. Hernandez. For years, Amar has travelled the Kavoran Empire, seeking a way to recover his lost memories and end the curse that plagues him. With support from loyal friends, Amar may finally be on the verge of finding answers. But to do so, he'll need to enlist the help of an unexpected guide. Kasari is a Taja, granted magical abilities through her bond with a spirit named Lucian. Haunted by past mistakes that have left her desperate to sever her bond, Kasari has her own reasons for agreeing to help Amar. But in doing so, she may finally have to face the fears she's carried ever since leaving home. Meanwhile, a young refugee named Alida is in hot pursuit, hoping the secret behind Amar's curse can save her brother from a fatal illness. With so much at stake and so little left to lose, Alida will stop at nothing to get what she wants. And when their paths collide, all three are set on a journey to unravel a mystery far deeper than they ever suspected. Then Before We Go blog has chosen The Thirteenth Hour by True Disguise. When the saints fail, the sinners step up. Cruel gods rule the steam-powered city of Chine, demanding worship and tribute from their mortal subjects. Kale lost her faith in them long ago and now seeks to protect the vulnerable and the downtrodden mortals from their god's whims. But when Kale discovers powers that she didn't know she had, and destroys a mortal soul by accident, she becomes Chime's most wanted. Quen's job was to pursue sinners until the vision started. Haunted by foreboding images of his beloved city's destruction, Quen hunts soul-sucking creatures made of ether who prey on its citizens, and Kale is his number one target. To ensure Chime's future, Kale and Quen must discover the truth of Kale's divine abilities before gods take matters in their own hands. For a city that bows to cruel gods, it'll take godless heathens to save it. Queen's Book Asylum has chosen Small Miracles by Olivia Atwater. A little bit of sin is good for the soul. Gadriel, the falling angel of petty temptations, has a bit of a gambling debt. Fortunately, her angelic bookie is happy to let her pay off her debts by doing what she does best. All Gadriel has to do is tempt a miserably sinless mortal, Holly Harker, to do a few nice things for herself. What should be a cakewalk of a job soon runs into several roadblocks. However, as Miss Harker politely refuses, every attempt at temptation from Gadriel the woman, Gadriel the man, and Gadriel, the adorable fluffy kitten. When even chocolate fails to move Gadriel's target, the ex-guardian angel begins to suspect she's been conned. But Gadriel still remembers her previous job. And where petty temptations fail, 
small miracles may yet prevail. The final book is from Bookborn, and this is Fire of the Forebears by L.A. Buck. Pitted against one another, with the people and country they love in jeopardy, the daughter of a deserter and the son of the king have a chance to fulfil their forebear's legacy, or destroy it entirely. Twisted monsters called the Saja lurk in the shadows of the mountains. Rumours say the Fidelis, human wielders of an ancient magic, again walk the plains. Not all in Averon believe, and not all welcome the return of a legend. Kura's a sceptic, but she'll cross and befriend centaurs, talking animals, and worse, to save her family after the rebellion mistakes her for the land's prophesied saviour. And while he'd rather negotiate with rebels than fight them, Tristan can't ignore prophecy. That was the sham his father used to steal the crown in the first place. Over a century ago, their ancestors sailed their oceans in search of peace and died as heroes fighting for it. But heroes and villains aren't always what they seem to be. So definitely a mix of sub-genres this year. So if you have read any of these, I would love to know your thoughts on the finalists. Thanks for watching and I shall see you all soon.